Thank you for joining us for another episode of Edmonton Real Estate Today. I am your host, Leroy Warden, and today our guests are Cheryl Stevens of Remax Real Estate and Michael Broderick, the current chair of the Real Estate Association of Edmonton. Cheryl and Michael, welcome to our program. Thank you. Thank you, Leroy. Yeah, so it's good to see you guys. So let's just jump right into it. The Real Estate Association released their stats here this morning. So it's hot off the press. Uh, they reported new listings of 1,860 and approximately 1,100 sales. And the inventory showed at 79.23. So for the current sellers that are on the market today, what should these numbers mean to them trying to sell their homes? Well, I know when I look at the whole city stats like that, and you break it down to the number of homes sold and the number of listings on the market, we're looking at about 14% are actually selling. Yes. So I think it's really important that the sellers, when they're listing their homes, they keep that in mind so they know actually how to position their home. And then looking at it closer for them is right in their own community, because every community is going to have a little different percentage of how many are selling. And the key would be to talk to their realtor, you know, look at the number of homes selling in their neighborhood, how to position themselves and maybe see what the sales look like so they can actually make sure that their home is comparable to those other ones to find the right price point. Right. I think it's really important to remember that real estate is in fact hyper local. We so often use aggregate stats, whether it's the Realtors Association of Edmonton, Canadian Real Estate Association, we have these aggregate stats. You've got a city of nearly a million people with all of these neighborhoods. The, the aggregate stats often really don't mean much. Uh, there's more of a story as you break that down further and further. I think too this year we've been talking about having stability in our marketplace. It's important that sellers remember the market is still moving. Nice. Um, you know, a property can't be sold if it's not listed. People many times want to rip it off the market as soon as the snow flies. Right. Well, buyers need something to buy. Um, you know, it's always taking it off isn't always the right answer. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. The entire uh, sales that are happening right now. Uh, is that more of a seasonal thing? Because we're looking at about a 1,100 sales in comparison to what has been happening on all year. That trend, is that something that you guys feel that is happening because of us heading into winter? Sales kind of declining a bit or what are your feelings? I think, you know, part of it is seasonal. I mean, we, we typically, when we look at what's happening with with prices, things, that's been slightly off of what it normally is, but the general market trend yes. continues to be the same. We are busier in the spring, we quiet a little bit, then we, you know, in the summer, it gets a little bit quieter, the beginning speeds up a little more at the end, and we, we taper off, so that general market trend seems to be the same. I think something that's been happening this year, generally that's affecting the market, is federal policy um, around lending has really had an impact on, on things. There's been a lot of talk mm -hmm. about how that affects buyers, but it's impacting sellers because in an effort to cool markets in Toronto and in Vancouver, um, it's had a downward effect on price across the country, um, pushing that downward to allow buyers to enter. But that's literally stolen equity from sellers. Uh, and sellers notice that now, well, I, I want to sell my house, but I don't want to sell it for that. But unfortunately, that is what the market will bear at this right. time. So that, that's really had an impact on sellers and sellers have to keep that um, in mind that uh, there really needs to be a realistic approach around around price and when the realtor is giving them information about um, price, it's, that's the reality of today's market. The board released stats for single family homes showing the average price of a single family home is about 420,000, condos are about 228,000 and duplex is around 322. Now the respective length of time each of those are taking to sell, single family homes are 64 days, the condos are 78 days and the duplexes are, uh, is also 64 days. Buyers out here now looking at these saying, here's how long they're taking to sell and here what average prices are. As a buyer, what should I be thinking? Well, I think depending on, you know, what kind of buyer you are, right? Number one, if you're looking for that specific community and that's just the only place you wanna live, that's one thing you're gonna talk to your realtor about. But if you're that buyer in the marketing, and you're wanting to get a deal, then I think you need to also be reminded to look at the stuff that's been sitting a little bit longer. Not necessarily you know, expecting to jump on the brand new listings and get a deal. Keep in mind, it's like the seller that's been sitting there 90 days, 120 days. Yeah. They're probably gonna be a little more motivated to give you that house for a little bit better price point. Right. So I think that's really important that you know that 
there's still good quality houses out there and sometimes what it needs to be is maybe that person was sort of chasing the market and it wasn't in your price point before so it's been sitting a while now it's in your price point you might get that better deal for that house because they've now come down to what the market value really is i think two days on market as well we shouldn't be that are we scared of days on market it's been on the market for a long time why something right. must be wrong it's not necessarily the case there's a buyer for every home um, but the buyer may not be there today um, somebody that maybe your home has been on the market three or four months somebody wasn't looking for it that person might be looking for your house tomorrow i mean I, I think on both sides of the equation buyers and sellers you don't want to be too afraid of of days on market i think it's the right thing to look at it's the right thing to look at yes oh, good yes. point if i am a home seller and my average days on market now they're saying the average for a home selling is 64 days if i am sitting there and i'm 90 days what should i be feeling about that well, I know, you know, going back to what Michael just said, the key is number one, looking at your home, how is it positioned, right? And then knowing that, no, maybe that right buyer is in the market right now. And maybe it's nothing to do with your home. But if it is, if there is things you can do, because you can, you know, clean it up a little bit, maybe paint that one green wall that's maybe not, it's turning people off or whatever, then you take care of those things. But if it is, sometimes it is, if it, according to the stats, if you're priced really well, and let's say there's nothing else selling in your community, maybe you just need to wait a little longer until that right buyer is there. Right. I think, again, too, you have to be cautious with those stats. And this is where you need some help from your realtor to interpret what's happening at a local level. Our stats are aggregate. That's the entire census metropolitan area. That's the city of Edmonton, Spruce yeah. Grove, Stony Plain, St. Albert, Sherwood Park, all the, this whole mm -hmm. massive area. There are places where properties you know, are still selling today with multiple offers in a few days. Uh, and there are properties that are on the market for six months or, or more. It's really important to look at those hyper-local stats as opposed to just saying, well, the aggregate's 78 days and I'm 90. What's the problem? Right, right. So taking it on a local level. Knowing how the market has performed in the past, what are your predictions for 2020? Well, Please feel oh. free. <laughs> Gee, thanks. Well, I know my feeling is I was looking at the unemployment rate and going, okay, what's been happening? So I know in 2018, we were at about 6.5%, 2019 at about 7.6%. So I really, I see 2020 being very similar unless there's a lot more jobs created. Okay. If more jobs get created, be it oil and gas, you know, the whole idea is then there'll be more people moving. But right now, I think it's gonna be very similar to what we've been having. This That's year. my thought. I agree. I think we're going to be very similar to 2019. I think things are going to stay relatively stable. We've been fortunate. Stable is, a, is an okay thing to report. Um, we often say, well, the market's just stable. We really want the market to be booming. Stable right. is okay. Uh, stable yeah. means that buyers are, are buying, sellers are, are selling, and, and there is movement in the market. Um, we do have to look at what's going to happen with policy. We've been pushing very hard at a local level, a provincial level, and a federal level um, with an organized real estate to have some change to federal policy to look at regionalizing the stress test. Um, we've got other things that are coming in now, the new home buyer incentive or first time home buyer incentive um, from the government, with, which is essentially an equity loan from CMHC. Is that going to have an impact here? Possibly. We're at, we're at a price point where if people choose to use that option, it may, may prove helpful here. But I think we can expect things to be stable. Um, and stable is not uh, a bad thing. I, I think also we need to be cognizant of what's happening everywhere. It, there's not just a lack of consumer confidence just in the city of Edmonton or just in Alberta. There's a lot of things happening globally and people just generally um, aren't, aren't sure where things are going to land. Well, Cheryl and Michael, thank you so much for taking the time out to share your thoughts on uh, the stats set for November. So good to see you. And Michael, thanks again. Thank you. All right, and happy holidays, guys.